Wasn't this a good week? You've seen the glory. And isn't it fitting to uh, end a week like this with the Lord's table? This week we've heard a lot about the glory of God. One of the most glorious aspects of God is his son, Jesus Christ. The son's glory has stretched from before the foundation of the world was laid. He was a lamb that was slain before the foundation. Jesus has instituted this table that we are about to partake in, to be gathered to. It is uh, in remembrance of him. We see this in Luke 22. Luke 22, 19. And he took bread and gave thanks, and he brake it, and gave unto them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. Likewise, also the cup of supper, after supper, saying, This cup is a New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. We are to think upon Jesus Christ when we gather around this table, Amen. not ourselves. This table is for him and him alone. Paul touches on this a little bit in uh, 1 Corinthians, of us thinking upon ourselves. 1 Corinthians 11, 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is, in, is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he comes. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. When we gather around the Lord's table, we are thinking upon higher things than you and I. We are remembering the Lord's death until he returns. We are remembering that it was by his body that was broken and by his blood that was shed that we have redemption. This table is not for us to gather around and ask for forgiveness of the past week's sin. We are to repent of them and ask for forgiveness at that time of sin enters in and not let sin reign in our bodies. This table was instituted, instituted, instituted for us to remember our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and his death. He has given us this bread as his body, which was broken for us, and he has given us this cup, which is the New Testament in his blood, that was shed for the remission of sins. We are to gather around this table and remember Christ's sacrifice that he had made for us. We are to eat of this bread and drink of this cup to show the Lord's death until he comes. This is not for us. This is for him. Almost everything that we have heard this week has been revolved around Christ and what he has done for us. And it is very proper that we finish out this week by remembering the Lord's death by gathering around his table. Because he, uh, this shows the glory of God. We read in Isaiah of what was prophesied of his death. Isaiah 53, 3. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief, acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our tra transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. We see through this passage of the physical pain that Christ went through for a nation that hated him. But even deeper than that, we know the spiritual struggle that he went through when he kneeled in a garden. He was going to have to bear the sin of the people that hated him and it was going to be laid upon his shoulders and worse yet his father was going to forsake him remember we remember reading of his struggle and the sweat that fell off of himself as great drops of blood this pain was greater than any stripe that was laid upon his back and through all this pain and anguish 
we are brought to the Father. Jesus spoke of his flesh and his, and his blood in the uh, Gospel of John. John 6, 48. I am the bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of man, the son of man, and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my, blo my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. We see through these words of Jesus that whosoever eats of his body and drinks of his blood dwells in him, and he dwells in us, and we shall be raised up on the last day and we shall live forever. Let us remember the Lord every time we gather around this table that it is by his broken body that we can enter in through the veil that is his body. And it is by his blood that we have the remission of sins. It is by his body and his blood that we can have everlasting life. Now we'll say a little prayer and we'll pass out the Lord's table. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, Lord, we just want to thank you for you instituting this table for us, Lord. And Lord, I just pray that, that uh, we do not take this as a light matter, but with all the seriousness and heaviness that you have given it to us. Lord, it was not, a, not an easy thing for you to die for us, Lord, but we greatly love you for it. And Lord, I just pray that every time we gather around, that we eat of your body and we drink of your blood and that we may have everlasting life and Lord we know that this is true by your words in Jesus name